So if you can drink that, that temperature, yes, then you, you might have the risk of getting cancer, especially the esophagus. Otherwise, I don't see this as a realistic carcinogen. Lastly, carbohydrate that undergo high temperature and low moisture cooking temperature, a eh, cooking methods, for example, like french fries, deep frying, or pastry, the skin of the pastry is carbohydrate, rich in carbohydrate, and undergo high temperature, low moisture cooking method. So this kind of cooking method will create a uh, carcinogen by the name of acrylamide. And acrylamide is also a, a known cause of cancer, especially if you take in very high frequency and you take in a large amount together with unhealthy uh, dietary practices. Okay, next. i just go through it quickly because a lot of doctors have already mentioned this. The... the the top 10 cancers in Singapore. So we can see that as you can, if you can scan, if you can scan through the list here, actually a lot of the cancers can be prevented by healthy lifestyle and also diet. So that means that what you eat day in and day out will become a switch to either switch on your cancer risk or switch off your cancer risk. Okay, not to worry. Later on, I will empower you guys to do to to to, to practice what you can do later on in your dietary choices. Okay, so now I will explain to you on the multi-steps of cancer development. So at my screen here, I have a very cute looking innocent cell. So this is actually a normal cell in the body. But when there's a trigger, for example, you have ingesting a lot of unhealthy food, carcinogens in your body, or simply because of the uh, gene that you are carrying, for example. So all the carcinogens will serve as a trigger that trigger DNA mutation. So this normal cell will turn into a mutated cell. But as you can see from these slides, if you don't get rid of the trigger timely, remove them or neutralize them timely, this trigger will keep on triggering or encouraging the growth of the... Oh, I think you have to click that one. <laughs> it's still a normal cell. Okay, so if you are not getting rid of this trigger, it will encourage the growth of this mutated cell and, the, and they will start to grow into one kampong of mutated cell. And the mutated cells are very good. They will say, okay, I protect myself. I will screen myself from immune destruction. So this represents immune system destruction and also growth surveillance. Okay? Our body will try to suppress the growth of tumour, but the cancer will have this protect protective mechanism. So at the same time, they will create fire in the body. So the fire will represent inflammation. It will cause inflammation in the body. And also at a certain stage of cancer, especially the malignant tumour, they will start to migrate to the other parts of the body by the means of the bloodstream. And when they migrate and invade another parts of the body, they will start to grow another kampung there. Okay? And at the same time, you say, okay, I don't need any blood supply from the host. I will produce my own blood supply. And the process is called angiogenesis. So the tumour can produce their own blood supply to supply the nutrients that they need for growth. Quite scary, right? But not to worry, later on I will show you how our diet and nutrients can actually target different mechanisms of cancer development. And lastly, the cancer or the, the, the tumour will discharge a lot of rubbish and dump it into the system. The rubbish represents inflammatory cytokines. It's some signals that will cause, like especially in the advanced stage of cancer, this cytokine is the causes of um, loss of appetite muscle wasting, or we call cancer cachexia. So you can see at one stage of cancer, the patient can be very thin, even though we are feeding them very high calories, but they just can't retain any weight. It be, it's because of these inflammatory cytokines. And these inflammatory cytokines, together with the inflammation, will cause the problem like loss of appetite and so on in the cancer patient. Okay, so next, I will focus on one part of the multi-steps of cancer development is the migration or the metastasis of cancer cell. So on this uh, screen here, so yeah, you see a very nasty looking mutated cell and you see some black patches on the surface. So pardon my editing skill, this is the best that I can do. So the black patches right, actually represent one of the molecules we call it galactin-3 adhesion molecule. So this galactin-3 adhesion molecule right, is very similar to the hook and loop concept. So inside our body, normal cells or cancerous cells will express this galactin-3 adhesion molecule to help them with growth, uh, development, and so on. So, but the cancer cells will also utilize the same thing. Oh, this one is too fast. Okay, so as you can see, 
our body will also produce this galactin-3 adhesion molecule. So if our body, uh, for example, if there's damaging stimuli or there's chronic or repeat repetitious uh, inflammation happening in the body. Our body will produce excessive amount of galactin-3 adhesion molecule. So what does this cancer cell do is that it will utilize the galactin-3 molecules that our host, that our cell produce and will make them stickier. So when they are stickier, like Dr. Tan just mentioned earlier, in the bloodstream you have some circulating tube cancer cells flowing in the body. So these cancerous cells, right, we utilize these galactin-3 molecules to stick onto or to, to group the other circulating cancerous cells in the bloodstream to make them into a small, small group. Okay? At the same time, uh, the cancer cells use the same molecule to adhere itself on the inner surface lining of blood blood vessels, and when they adhere themselves on the galactin-3 molecules of our own body, they will, it will penetrate the blood vessels and they will start growing or adhere to the, 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 the nearby or the adjacent organ. So this is a detailed process of metastasis. Okay, so let's go through very quickly some very general guidelines that you can practice in preventing cancer. One is that you have to keep your weight within healthy body range and be physically active like what Dr. Jandana uh, mentioned earlier, aim for 150 minutes of moderate physical activity a week. So it can be five days, 30 minutes each day, or you can exercise three days, one hour uh, per session. Okay, why is it so? Because the fat tissue in the body, right, they are not dead tissue, they are living tissue, and they will produce hormones or growth factors, and they will increase one of the fat, um, fat cell hormones by the name of leptin. This leptin will increase estrogen signaling. That's why obese or overweight ladies have a higher risk of getting breast cancer. It's because the leptin or the, or the leptin that's produced by the adipose tissue or the fat tissue will increase estrogen signaling. Okay, so be physically active. Next is that instead of taking high calorie foods and sugary drinks, uh, and also uh, limit red meat a white processed meat, and at the same time, replace with more fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, and so on. Okay, so instead of taking red meat, processed meat, you can take uh, fish or poultry, and so on, or even plant protein. Next, for those who are not drinking at all, very good, continue to do so. But for those who drink, limit to not more than two drinks for men and one drink per day for ladies. So you can see different units of uh, different alcoholic beverages here. And next, eat less salt and avoid moldy grains altogether. And, last, and next, whenever possible, obtain your nutrients from natural foods uh, instead of processed food. And next will be for ladies, uh, breastfeed your babies exclusively for six months because this can prevent yourself as well as your baby to prevent against cancer and some other diseases later on in their lives. And lastly, for cancer survival, Practice the aforementioned recommendation. Okay, so now let's go through um, some of the challenges that, I, that we might need to consider in terms of diet when you are planning a cancer prevention diet. So first is that we need to maximize our nutrient intake by taking a variety of nutrient-dense food. So instead of junk food, desserts, fried food, processed food, try to um, replace with different fruits and vegetables in variety of colors. So a healthy shopping bag should look something like this. So you can do your menu planning ahead and when you go to the shopping mall or, or supermarket, you can try to buy fruits and vegetables of different colors and stock up your fridge uh, readily with uh, readily available healthy foods ingredient. And also when you cook and when you're off for your meals, remember to include more vegetables to make to, besides adding more colors, most importantly, they add more nutrients into your diet. Okay, for example, even fruits, you can make them into dessert like overnight oats or fruit popsicle and so on. Okay, next. But how much is enough? How much should we eat? We need at least four to five servings of fruits and vegetables in a day. So what is one serving of vegetables? One serving of vegetables will be something like this. If it's cooked vegetables, it will be like one handful. If it's raw vegetables, it will be Two handful. Okay? One day we need at least two to three servings. But if you can eat a little bit more vegetables, that even, that's even better. 
What about one serving of fruits? We need at least two servings of fruits per day. So if weight is not an issue to you, or you don't have blood sugar problem, and you want to eat more fruits, 